Hi, my name is Jonathan Hicks. I'm back at the Dinoscope, and this evening I'm joined by Dean, Steve, Mark, and we just finished playing Villagers, which is a sort of card drafting and tableau building game. You can see at the end of the game here, uh, the tableaus are fairly big. You are going to get a lot of cards out in this game. In terms of how you play, when it's your turn, you can draft cards from the middle. And in fact, you're going to be drafting according to the number of uh, food symbols you have in a village. Effectively, this shepherd and this fromager <laughs> produces food, and so that attracts more people to your village. Uh, you get to draft two cards for free, plus the number of food symbols, so you're going to take it in turns to draft cards. Now, in terms of uh, getting the cards, one important thing is there's a lot of chains on these cards. You see, this wheeler needs a lumberjack, and if you get the wheeler later on, you can build the cart right. Now, you're going to have a hand of cards, and incidentally, I think I might have... Well, there we go, at the back, at the back. I've got a cart right, so that's actually a great card for me. So I'm going to draft this wheeler. Any coins on it you get, so they go to my supply of coins. And you just place them for now on your village square. And everyone goes around drafting, uh, and it'll come back to me, and maybe I decide to take the cart right or something. But you're going to acquire, as I say, a bunch of cards here. And then, after that, you kind of refill the uh, road, as it's called, for next time. Um, but then you're going to build this in your village. And as you can see, in order to build a wheeler, I need a lumberjack. Now, I don't actually have a lumberjack, but he's one of the basic villagers. You can always acquire these when you're trying to build things. Uh, but you'd have to discard one of your other cards. So maybe I don't need this priest, so I'm going to discard him. And he goes on one of these face-down stacks, and then I would acquire my lumberjack. Now, the lumberjack, you can see a lot of these, like the hayer here. You can actually have two stacks of things on each of the basic villagers. So on top of the lumberjack, I could then put my wheeler. So the wheeler will go there. And then later on, I could also put my um, cart right on top of the wheeler. Now, he will score me three points in the scoring phase. There's like two main scoring phases in the game here, the red one and the blue one. Um, but if I play my cart right, it covers up the wheeler. So I'm not going to get those points, but I'm going to get the nine points from this. So that's fine. Now, a couple of other things. Uh, when you're trying to build cards, some cards have prerequisites. So this blacksmith... Uh, a lot of people need the blacksmith. For example, if you want to build a glass blower, the little unlock thing here means you need someone has to have a blacksmith. Effectively, you got to pay them. So if you don't have a blacksmith, you'd have to pay someone else. Let's say Dean had a blacksmith, I'd have to pay him two coins. Um, if you have it yourself, though, you kind of get the money from the bank, and it goes on the card. So it's not actually money you can spend on things, but when it's on the card, it's like having the gold symbol here. You're going to earn all of this money in the scoring round. Now, as well as cards sort of appearing on the road here, these are the stacks that they come from at some point. Uh, and at the start of the game, there's like a bunch, there's like a stack here and a stack here, there's several stacks. And when all these stacks are cleared, then you have this first scoring phase. And any gold symbols on cards or any coins placed on cards, like I was saying, will score. So in that scoring phase, I get two plus all of these coins. And you take them from the bank and put them in your supply. And then we go through, and when all the cards have gone, you have the second and final scoring phase when you're scoring the gold ones again and the coins on the cards again but you're also scoring silver ones now silver ones are like end game scorings uh, so it's things like this horse trader this is giving me three coins for every pair of um, hay symbols i have so you can see all the hay cards have got these symbols on if i had quite a lot of those that was getting me quite a lot of points um, but there are end game scoring cards like this as well now there are a few other cards that will mess with things like special cards um well, we have a bunch of those didn't we Apprentices uh, can go, you can switch it out in someone else's village, so you can kind of take one of their villagers. Uh, the monk will count as anything, he's like a wild card. Uh, there are some cards that when you play them, it lets you ignore the unlock things. So if you don't want to have to pay Steve to use his shipwright or something, you can uh, use a, the, um, a card to avoid paying him. So there's other special cards, but essentially you're just drafting the cards, playing them out, trying to score as many points as you can. By the end, what do we think? It was the first play, I quite liked it. Um, I don't know how much replayability it's got. Uh, I have a feeling it might get um, samey, but I think it's still going to be one of those that sort of like would come off the cupboard, come out of the cupboard every now and then to, to play. Some of the chains obviously are nice and easy, there's loads of them. Some of the chains, there are very few of the cards, and that's why you need things like the apprentice in order to be able to sneak the card you want. Um, it was very tight scoring, surprisingly, for a, for a first play for a first play through the game, and we were all playing separately. It's actually quite a quick game. It, it feels like quite slow at the beginning, but it accelerates like nobody's business towards the end. So the end came very quick. I quite liked it. Okay. Steve? Uh, yeah, Dean's right. You'll know if this is the sort of game you like. Um, 
it did accelerate. It played in about an hour, and I think if you uh, if you get the habit of it, there's going to be a lot of people who quite like this. Um, I didn't, and I don't know why exactly, but it felt like the uh, the player order when the cards come out, you're kind of if you're fourth to pick or third to pick, you, you're not going to get what you want. And early on, getting buildings, a mix of buildings and food is what you need. So basically, if I have three food and three buildings, I can, or like, or the equivalent of, um, I get to draft and play an equal number of cards. If I've just got more food and more buildings, well, I can build lots of cards, but I can't pick the cards up to build or so on. And Dean on the first round took the only building that was there, and he managed to play it on his first turn. That on, we didn't. So Dean was playing three cards around thereafter, and then he managed to get some food because he could draft, uh, so he could build more cards. He can, and as long as he made sure he got food, which seemed to be a bit more plentiful. So. Um, I, I don't know if that's uh, uh, the thing, but it just felt like that. Like I, need, I had the tailor in my hand at the start of the game, so 24 points. But to get the tailor, I need three other things. So every time, brilliant, a wall card comes out. I'm like, oh, I'll try and get the wall card. Either someone grabbed it before me, or when I picked it, I'm like, oh, it's another tailor. I'm like, oh, that's not very good. It doesn't help me build to that tailor. I never actually ended up getting the tailor. So when you're picking the cards blind off the top of the deck, I'm not sure the randomness behind it. I was often picking up cards that I'd already built or that I couldn't build. Um, uh, I would play it again, so it's not dreadful, but it wasn't for me. Okay. Mark? Yeah, I also liked it, but I don't think I loved it. Um, I think the engine you build is quite neat, but I do also lean towards what Dean said, is that I'm, uh, even though there's different engines, a lot of the engines kind of feel like just the same engine, but, it, but on different colour of cards, which I think there is, there, there is a decent amount of variation, but not loads, uh, so I don't like things to feel just a bit more different than what I'm doing. I also think, while it, is, it runs at a decent pace with people who have played before, for new players I think it can be quite AP pro. I think there are at times a lot of decisions that people are making of trying to work out. There's a lot of, you got this, have you got this, or would you, uh, shall I pay him the money on that, or, or you the money, which is good because it means you do get control of that, but you've got to kind of get, if you want to play it well, then you're thinking, uh, uh, I'll give it to you because I think you're not doing as well. So you're kind of sizing up people's decks. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. It's probably just not the favorite, my like favorite tableau build I've ever played. Rating? I would give it a six and a half. Steve? There's a lot of people who are going to like this. It's a bit too light for me. And then there's something I don't like about it and I don't know what it is. Five and a half. Okay. Steve? I'd give it a seven, but there's a warning that comes with it. Do not play it with anybody who seriously point counts in order to work out who's winning or who's not winning at any stage. Otherwise, this game will wind slow. Okay. I liked it quite a lot, actually. And it's, I think, because it is the engine builder, tablet builder, but it's light enough. Essentially, your, your choices are fairly simple. It's like, well, I've got these cards in my hand that are worth a lot of points. How can I get the chain in order to build them? You know, you need the lumberjack and then the cart ride, whatever it is, to build up to get to the big point scorers. Um, and when you're drafting the cards, instead of taking the ones on the road, you can just blind pick off the other piles. Now, you don't know what you're getting, but you can tell what the suit is. So if you need a wood card, for example, you can pick off the wood pile. So I like that kind of blind choice. It's, there is a bit of randomness there. I can see why Steve isn't so keen on that. But me personally, I quite like the, oh, this or card might be the one I need. Oh, it's not this time. I'll go for this other record. Yes, I got the one I needed. So I like that about it. There's a lot of cards out there, but once you know what you're doing, it plays very quickly. So I think that's fine. So if you want a kind of lighter engine building with plenty of choices, I think the jo it does the job very well. I'd be on a seven and a half out of ten. All right, thanks for watching. That was... Villagers. <laughs>